Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now you may remember if you're a regular viewer that we tested out a $1.50 graphics card and we've also tested out a $1.20 CPU. Now when we tested out the graphics card I paired it with my i5 processor which allowed the graphics card to achieve its maximum potential. We did the same sort of thing with the processor and paired it with my GTX 1060 to again allow that component to reach its maximum potential when it came to gaming. Today however, and per a few suggestions from you guys, we've decided to pair both the cheap processor and the graphics card together to create a well balanced and very very cheap pair and see how they get on when it comes to gaming. The CPU in question is the AMD X2 4200 Plus Socket 939 CPU. Because it's 939 we are limited to 4GB of DDR RAM and the graphics card is the 2600 XT 256MB GDDR4 version. Both of these components come to a total cost of $2.70 which is roughly about £2. Although you may not be lucky enough to find these components as cheap as I managed to, because I was very lucky, let's face it, you will be able to find them both at a pretty good price. So let's get onto some benchmarks and see what this pairing can do. First up we tested Half-Life 2, which we ran at the high settings with any form of anti-aliasing turned off. The resolution was also set to 1024 by 768 which provided the best gameplay experience and saw a return of 46 frames per second on average over our half an hour gameplay period. The game stayed pretty smooth throughout and I have no hiccups to report here so we're off to a pretty good start. Another older game we tried was the original Far Cry which ran at an almost perfect 60 frames per second. Now again we set the resolution quite low at 1024 by 768 and kept the game on the high settings to make it look a bit better. To be honest I think that paid off pretty well here and considering both of these components cost about the price of a sandwich we're not doing too bad so far. So we upped things a bit with GTA 4, if you're wondering about GTA 5 we did give it a go but the game just wouldn't run even on DX10 mode which is the maximum that this graphics card supports. GTA 4 however ran at 27 FPS on average, again with the 1024 by 768 resolution and all the details set to low. Remember that this is a 256 megabyte graphics card and these settings that were used used about 247 megabytes according to the in-game graphics menu. I should also mention that we left the detail bars in the game on about halfway to give the game a bit of a better look. Turning things all the way down didn't actually improve things too much so we thought that these were the best settings in this case. Finally we tried League of Legends. Now I was actually quite surprised by this result because I looked up a couple of other benchmarks and saw that this didn't run very well on this card. However those videos were using things like the Pentium 4 or Celeron D and in this case with our X2 4200 Plus we managed to see about 26 frames per second with the game on medium settings and that low 1024 by 768 resolution yet again. To be honest the experience overall was pretty good but turning things up or getting into more of an intense battle on screen did slow things down quite a bit. Now I don't usually revisit components I've already tested but as a lot of you requested that I pair these two together I thought I'd make the video and I'm glad I did because the results turned out quite interesting. So thank you to all of you who suggested this idea, thank you to all of those of you out there who are watching this video, like the video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, I'll leave a link to all my social media down below as well as my second channel if you want to check those out and as always subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks again guys and I'll see you in the next video.